gave him no choice. I was given an ultimatum. Either marry me or we're done. After that, everything went downhill. Here's a roller. We downhill, uphill, all around. What happened? What happened? <laughs> she reiterated the fact that I need to get a second job. And I'm thinking, if you had one job, I wouldn't need to get a second job. How you gonna tell me to get a second job? You ain't got no job. And now taunts out because he believes another man fathered Tiffany's newborn baby. Just last week, my wife had a child. The nurse said, here you go, daddy, hand me the baby. I'm looking down, this ain't my kid. <laughs> How do you know from a quick look that it wasn't your child? No, I got a big nose. This nose is way bigger than mine. It ain't my baby. I go ask the nurse, excuse me, nurse, what, what blood type is this baby? Mm -hmm. I know for a fact my wife and my kids' blood type is O positive. This baby's A positive. <laughs> now, how do two O's make an A? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Now, Thomas Martin and Tiffany Martin bring their case before Judge Toler in today's session of Divorce Court, where real couples deal with real life. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. We're here today on the case of Thomas Martin versus Tiffany Martin. Mr. and Mrs. Martin, you've been married one year. You do have one child together. Mr. Martin, you say that your wife is bossy and you're a little upset about the second baby whose paternity you are unsure about. Mrs. Martin, you say your husband was cheating and simply not bringing home enough money. Mr. Martin, I'm gonna start with you. Just last week, my wife had a child. I'm in the delivery room with her. I'm holding her hand, she's pushing. I even cut the baby's umbilical cord. Nurse said, here you go, daddy, hand me the baby. I'm looking down, this ain't my kid. Now, now, Mr. Martin, how do you know from a quick look that it wasn't your child? No, I got a big nose. This nose is way bigger than mine. It ain't my baby. Well, now, Mr. Martin, I must say, all children look different. I understand Not, that. You know, the, some of them tall, some of them curly, some of them light, some of them I'm not brown. feeling the connection. I'm not feeling the connection. So feeling insecure about this, I go ask the nurse. Excuse me, nurse, what, what blood type is this baby? Mm -hmm. I know for a fact my wife and my kids, blood type is O positive. This baby's A positive. <laughs> now, how do two O's make an A? That's what I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> Medically speaking, you have a point. Mrs. Martin, do you want to uh, explain the concerns he has over the baby? It happened nine months ago. I let him know from the beginning that he may not be the baby's daddy. He knew that from the get-go. And when I went to the hospital to uh, find out I was pregnant, he was there. He convinced himself that he was the father. I did not once ever tell him that he was. Nothing. He convinced himself. So I didn't come he out was say. just blinded by the fact that you didn't say anything and, oh, hey, you happen to be his wife, so... Thank you. The baby might be his. Tell me how we got into the position that you may indeed have a child by another man. Mr. Martin, can you help me I'm out with that? I'm gonna let you know, I'm gonna let you know. Please. We get married. First of all, I was forced into this marriage, okay? Not that I didn't, I, I did been with her for about four or five years. We've been together. I didn't want that How piece of paper. How are you? Ma'am, I'm only 20 years old. And you had been together with her five years? I've known this woman since I was 16 years old. She's my first and only love. Uh-huh. You ain't had time for anything I else. I haven't had yeah. time enough. She's all I know. Okay. So you were forced to get, forced to get I, married. I was given an ultimatum. That. I was given an ultimatum. Either marry me or we're done. You never really decided you wanted to be married? Th that's right. I never wanted to be married to begin with. I figure if we're doing good, what is a piece of paper going to change? We don't need that. All that does is legally bind me to stuff. She got the upper hand in the situation now. Well, if you were worried about being bound and tied up with someone, didn't you think maybe you shouldn't have babies with them? I mean, if that doesn't tie somebody up, what does? You're I right, mean, you're right. Much more than a piece of paper. Being so young, I never thought about that. What else went wrong? Well, like I said, I've been going, I was going out with some friends, hanging out. She's constantly blowing up my phone left and right. Where you at? Who is that in the background? What are you doing? I'm like, man, leave me alone. You know, just, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to distance myself from this situation. You got what you want. We married. That's what you wanted. All I'm doing is hanging out with friends. That's all I was doing, Yana. 
Marriage is not I do. That's just the ceremony that gets you married. Correct. Marriage is a whole process. It's a process of compromise, conversation, care, concern, can't do what you want to do a lot of the time. That's what marriage is. You're right. You know what I mean? Just because you didn't want to get married, there's no excuse for getting married and acting a fool as soon as you do. You went out together on that? Correct, yes. So you started going out. What happened? She's blowing up the phone. She's angry. You're going out. What happened? What happened? I'm getting stressed out, overwhelmed. No matter what I do, it's not good enough for her. Again, she re reiterated the fact that I need to get a second job. And I'm thinking, if you had one job, I wouldn't need to get a second job. How you gonna tell me to get a second job? You ain't got no job. How long were you together before you separated the first time? We were together, as far as a marriage wise, we were right. married for two months. Two months, and she leaves me. She leaves me not any other day out of the week. She leaves me on my birthday. Why did she leave? Why did she say she left? She said she left me because of my mouth. I was running my mouth. You know, I'm out partying. It's my birthday. I'm trying to enjoy myself. I might have might have talked to you know a few other females. Nothing serious. She's right here with me. She didn't like it. She up and leaves. And then she leaves you. She left the room. She, then she left you. She left the room. She left the house. She left the city. She went to her mama's house. <laughs> When divorce court continues. She pulls up in somebody else, some silver car, brand new car. I never seen it before. Whose car are you driving? She flat out tells me, some guy she's been dating. You mean to tell me you went home to reconcile with your husband with the guy that you're currently dating? Is this what you're telling me? And later. I'm in the bedroom, I'm laying down. I might have a little female friend with me. <laughs> Five, ten minutes later, after I get settled in, my door pops open. Divorce Court is back with the case of Thomas Martin, who testified the blood type of his wife's newborn baby proves he's not the father. When did you come back? About four months later. Why did you come back? Cause I thought we could work things out. We were sitting there talking, things were going better. He slowly eased his way back into our life like he did. Started so you two around, were calling each other daughter. and talking to each other yeah. and trying to reconcile. Yes, ma'am. Were you trying to reconcile with her, Mr. Martin? Yes, ma'am. Like Why? You said, I, at that time, I guess, I, I crossed over from being a boy to a man to, to a certain extent. I learned that this is a responsibility I need to take care of. I'm a married man with kids. I give you your props on that. That is quite true. Thank you. So you two got back together. We get back together. How well, long were you together before things got bad again? This is how it started. We get back on speaking terms before we got back together, OK? I'm trying to visit my daughter. She brings my daughter to me. She pulls up in some car I've never seen before. She has my car. I got a little red car. And I, whose car is this? We're supposed to be working. Wh whose car are you driving? She flat out tells me, some guy she's been dating. You mean to tell me you went home to reconcile with your husband with the guy that you're currently dating? Is this what you're telling me? Yes, ma'am. Walk me through that thought process real quick. <laughs> Walk me through it, too. I'm trying to figure it out. Because I really didn't think about it at that time. You really didn't think about it. Did you stop, did you stop seeing your boyfriend when, once you found out you were pregnant and got back with your husband? Not from the beginning, no. Not from the beginning, no. Not at all. Yes, I did. Are you still with the boyfriend? He's in the military. He's in Oklahoma. OK, but are you still with him? Yes. When did you decide you had enough? I decided I had enough. Let me build up to that real quick. Okay, please do. We get back together. After we find out she's pregnant, we do get back together. Right. I don't have a stable living situation, mm -hmm. neither does she. We move back into her mother's house. Right. Okay. I'm working now. Get back into, you know, I get off work. This guy's standing in her mother's house. I've never met this dude before. This is the first time I met him. So being civil, trying to respect her mother, you know, being my mother-in-law, trying to respect her household, we talk. We sit down and talk. It's her decision. That's what we both agree to. It's her decision. As much as we want to change it, it's her decision who she wants to be with. So we agree. We want to sit back and let her make that decision. A couple Very days good. later, she decides me. And I'm thinking, of course, you know, I'm her husband. Maybe she's thinking it's my kid, too. So I do. I get convinced this is my child. I move back into her mother's house, right? Mm-hmm. 
we get into it again. Clash of personalities, call it what you want, and I don't know what it was. Nitpicking about every little thing. I get off work. Who were you talking to at work? What took you so long to get home? Nitpicking everything. I'm just want to get home and relax. What does she do? She gets out. She moves in with this, the other gentleman and his mother. And you still living with him? And I'm still I'm living not... at my in-laws' house. By my, I'm... <laughs> exactly. Without her, I'm just living in my mother-in-law's because I ain't got nowhere else to go. Did you do that? Yes, I did. When divorce court continues. I catch a glimpse of a letter, handwritten letter. It wasn't just bills and it was a handwritten letter. I said, what is that? None of my business. That's what she tells me. None of your business. Hold up, we're married. You ain't got your own business. It's 50-50 here, you know. Divorce Court returns with the case of Thomas Martin, who testified his wife abandoned him at her parents' house so she could start a new life with her boyfriend. So you two have never been back together since then? Yes, we have. We have. <laughs> I would ask you, Mrs. Martin, but he tells a better story a little bit, and you seem to be co-signing on just about everything he says, so I'll ask you if anything's wrong. So, Mr. Martin, why don't you explain to me this Okay. Last reconciliation. I'm going to let you know. I'm living at her mother-in-law. It's an uncomfortable situation for me. Yes. I'm living with, you know, my ex's mother-in-law. You know, how does that work? I'm doing it, though, and I explain to him, you know, I just started working again. By the first of the year, I'll be out of here. I'm going to have my own place. And that's exactly what happened, okay? She gives me a phone call. We're, we're back on speaking terms now. She gives me a phone call telling me how, how bad this guy's treating her. He ain't doing no good. I'm mad. No, my, daughter's in, my daughter's involved in this situation. Right. I'm mad. Hey, right. why don't you guys just come on back? Come on back and live with me. I'm holding it down. I'm stable now. Ain't none of the problems in the past. We're going to move on, make, make it work. I get off work one day. She picked me up from work. Walking up, she checks the mail. I catch a glimpse of a letter, handwritten letter. It wasn't just bills. And it was a handwritten letter. I said, what is that? None of my business. That's what she tells me. None of your business. Hold up. We're married. You ain't got your own business. It's 50-50 here, you know. I finally get a glimpse of the letter. Oh, I miss you so much. I'm glad you're... And it's from this, this gentleman that's in the Army. Yeah. He, things are so rough here. He's telling his whole story to her about how, like, they're together still. So I get... I'm, I'm mad. I'm mad. She, you know, tells me, hey, it's not me that's doing that. That's him. It's completely one-sided. He's the one who wrote the letter. I haven't, even, I haven't even wrote him. There's no return address. How do I know where he's writing from? How could I write him? So I'm thinking, being a man I am, I'm going to respect it, OK? I'm, I'm going to take your decision, right. and I'm, I'm going to settle with that, OK? Right. Tell me why, about three weeks later, another letter comes in the mail. She's not around. I get it. Right. <laughs> I open it up. I read it. Yeah. Thanks for the pictures. Thanks for sending me a letter. You've been sending pictures and writing letters behind my back while I'm working, and you ain't doing nothing? And that's when you put her out for good. That's when I put her out finally for good. I put her out. How did we get to this uh, glass table that was broken? Thomas, you want your wife to pay for the glass table that was broken. How did it get destroyed, and why should she pay for it? Yana, it's crazy. She had this baby last week. OK, I'm thinking this kid ain't mine. I'm going to have a little get-together. I'm going to have some friends over. I'm going to enjoy myself, OK? And go I, ahead, go ahead. And, and this is what I did. And I explained to her, I'm going to eat it to myself. I gave you the last couple days. OK. Just give me this, considering the situation. OK, fine. She shows up. I have my, all my friends over there, she shows up. I'm like, man, what are you doing here? What are you doing? Who's this? Who's that? Starts making a big scene. Finally, she goes back across the street. You know, we kind of ignore her, whatever, brush her off. She goes back across the street. I'm in the bedroom. I'm laying down. I might have a little female friend with me. <laughs> I feel, considering the circumstances, it doesn't matter if I'm trying to meet somebody new. It shouldn't matter. I'm in my own house. Doors are shut. I'm doing what I need to do. Am I going to hear breaking glass soon? This is a glass. OK, all right, all right. Go ahead. Five, 10 minutes later, after I get settled in, my door pops open. I turn around. Door at the, pops open. At the glimpse, at the corner of my eye, because I'm not paying attention to that. I'm, yeah. I'm focused on other things right now. I turn around. I hear bang, clang, glass flying everywhere. I'm looking back. She done drop kick my table and turn around, walked out. 
When divorce court continues, Judge Toler rules on the case of Martin versus Martin. But first... He goes picks up two other females in my car. After I just had the baby and everything, he you goes You just had up. another man's baby. Exactly. Let's, exactly. let's, let's keep everything in perspective. Divorce court continues with the case of Thomas Martin, who testified he put Tiffany out because she was writing letters to the man he believes fathered her baby. Mrs. Martin, can you tell me the story of the broken table? The reason table? he was being so nice, he can't pick me up from the hospital in my car. Then he goes picks up two other females in my car. After I just had the baby and everything, he you goes You just had up. another man's baby. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's keep everything in perspective. Okay, but at that time, he still doesn't know for sure if it's his DNA still has not been established. I went in the room to uh, feed the baby. That's why I was in there to begin with. I got tired, so I went home. I realized I left the baby's pacifier in the room. I sat there and called and called and called. He didn't want to answer. I needed the baby's pacifier because it's the only one she'll take. And so I go back over there. I knock on the front door. It's wide open. So I just go in. Wasn't nobody else in the living room or nothing, so I figure everybody left. I open the bedroom door, seen what he was doing, and then turn around and kicked over the glass table. <laughs> I've heard all I can stand. Mm -hmm. Youth often has a level of inexplicable bizarreness <laughs> that cannot be accurately uh, calculated, understood, or picked apart. Well, I was a fool when I was 20. I went from, well, I don't like this guy, I'm gonna go to that guy, oh, he's silly, I'm not gonna date, oh, I'll date, well, this was a black guy, oh, I'll date a white guy, see how they do, they don't, oh, no, 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 I'm gonna go back to black, 20 years old, this is what you do when you're 20, cause you're simple. There's nothing wrong with it, you're just simple. What you guys did, though, was start having babies and getting married when you were still doing all that simple stuff that 20 is designed for. You okay. cannot conduct your lives like adults if you are still children. Be that as it may, 20 years old, you're old enough, you can't go in somebody's house and break their table. If you go in a house and break the table for whatever reason, and you had no business being jealous being that you had another man's baby in your arms and whatnot. Thank you. So Thank you. you're gonna have to pay that man that forty dollars for that table you're broke. Thank it you. is so ordered. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. I was there 100%, I was there in the delivery room, and I thought I could handle it. I thought I could be a man and be supportive for my wife, but considering the circumstances, and once everything happened, I realized I can't do it. And he's the one that said from the beginning he didn't care who the father was, whether it was his or the other guys, that he was going to take full responsibility, and he didn't end up doing nothing. There's no way I can handle this. There's no way I can deal with the fact that my wife has a kid by another man. I don't see anybody that could handle that. It just doesn't make sense. It's not something that should happen in daily life. There's no way that you can go off just making babies with whoever you want and expect the person that you married to be there for you consistently. I've been there for a while, and now I'm done. I just can't handle it no more. I'm through with this whole situation. I just I want to move on to bigger and better things. Now he's being a total hypocrite because from the beginning he knew the baby wasn't his and he told me that he could deal with it and now he can't and so that's why he's taking everything back and blaming it on me because until last Friday we were still talking about getting back together until I found him with somebody else. Demand for pharmacy techniques.